Hey guys, Dave and Len here. In this episode of Wargame Chat, we're going to talk about over-the-top wargamers. Uh, wargamers who are either completely crazy, completely evil, or just plain over-the-top. Who, who's your first one? Oh, my first one is actually the evil dungeon master. <laughs> I, I think I mentioned before when we play RPG games that he seemed to encourage uh, criminal behavior with, uh, with the characters. <laughs> Well, that's pr pretty mild compared to some of the ones that I got on my list. But <laughs> well, yeah, you know, at the time I was thinking, what is this Dungeons and Dragons I'm getting into? Mm. Actually, I thought at the time it should be renamed uh, Dragons and Dice, but yeah, I thought it was a horrible title. But anyway, there was another guy. Uh, we're not going to use any last names here, so we don't get sued. But his name was Pete. Ah, and Pete had. Uh, one of the other war gamers brought him to my dad's house, uh, I don't know, this was like 30 years ago or something, and he came over, seemed like a nice guy, and after he left, the problem is when he left, one of my dad's books was missing. So my dad talked to the other guys about him, he wasn't really sure who took it, but then one month later, Pete went to a convention, and the convention was in a church, and so he went on like a Friday night, and then it closed until the next day, and all the dealers put the... Uh, blankets over their tables and they closed up so he broke into the church and uh, stole a bunch of wargaming stuff but fortunately someone saw and called the police and they caught him in the act so then after that basically every convention in the area that, that knew of this guy had banned him fr from the convention <laughs> and so there, there was a game shop I won't tell you which one in the Chicagoland area and Pete walked in there and the owner knew who he was he said Pete you got five minutes to shop and then you're never allowed in my store again because I know you're a thief and I know you robbed the church blah 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 so he had three of his employees in a circle around this guy while he was shopping and stuff to make sure he didn't steal anything you, you've met Pete right oh, he yeah. stole from Ted too didn't he I, yeah, I think I was the only one who he never stole from, mainly because I don't think I had anything he was interested in. Mm. Well, he was the first person I knew that had cable television, and uh, he was describing some movies I didn't think existed. I later found out that's the only truthful time that he said anything. Mm. He kept on insisting that Alexander the Great was assassinated, a, I, you know, something I couldn't care less about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we always used to joke about him is that when he was arrested, I think he was, at one point was arrested, and in the jail all the hard ex-cons are like backing away, telling him, we don't want this guy in here, he's too much for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But yeah, everyone's got a story about this guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, ne next one I want to talk about is a guy named Bob. Bob was an interesting character. He was great to talk to. He knew everything there was to know about the Romans. He could talk for hours about the Roman Empire and stuff. And he, he was a miniature player, and of course he played Romans and Ancients and stuff. And he had 23 painted Roman legions, and each legion had a minimum, minimum of 240 uh, well-painted figures. And if he had like a double-sized first cohort, then it had uh, 264 figures in it. Beautiful figures, had uh, enough barbarians to fight it all. He was, he was talking about one day he wanted to have like a, a game where he could put uh, set up everything like in a gymnasium or something and ha have everything set up and have like a game that lasted like two months or something, but that never materialized. He ended up uh, dying and stuff, but uh, he, he was an interesting character. He, he was known for writing bad checks. He would buy war games figures from people at conventions and write checks and the checks would bounce and stuff so uh, he had a lot of uh, uh, difficulties with that I sure as hell wouldn't accept a check from the guy but I think the craziest thing he did he his hygiene wasn't that good I mean he bathed and stuff but like his hands would be dirty and stuff but he was selling some figures at a convention and uh, I went through one of the boxes, and there was old chicken bones from, like, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, sitting in, in the box, uh, rotting with uh, figures that were worth, like, $8 a figure and stuff. And I was like, what the hell? And at the same convention, he was eating a sandwich, and he was talking to this lady who was helping him sell figures or something. And as he eats the sandwich, he takes a bite, and he puts it down right on top of a, a, a unit, a, 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 co a Roman cohort and stuff, to sit it there, using that as his plate, and then he grabs it again and stuff. So... <laughs>
Yeah, really. <laughs> he he was great to talk to, but uh, yeah, he, table his, manners. His, his, yeah, table manners were very bad. Important <laughs> so if you're in war gaming. Yeah. So. Who's your next one? Oh, Ted. Yeah, Ted's an interesting character. Ted was a nice guy, and he had a great collection. And the collection was huge. He had uh, miniatures, board games, uh, role-playing games. He didn't know how to play most of it, though. He wasn't the smartest guy. I mean, uh, he had below-average intelligence. He wasn't, like, you know, mentally retarded or anything. But uh, he, he had low intelligence, and uh, he had trouble seeing. I mean, there was some problem with his yeah, eyes, where even with average. corrective lenses... Uh, it couldn't get him to anywhere even close to 2020, so he'd have a lot of trouble seeing stuff. But he had all these games, and he couldn't figure out how to play most of them. So the only time he'd get to play any of them is if someone came over and he'd hand them the rule book, and they'd have to figure out the rules so he could play. But, uh, yeah, he had a huge collection. He had PlayStation uh, game. PlayStation 2 was the, the system at the time, and he had a ton of games for that, a ton of them for the Atari and so forth. But... He came into bad times, and uh, I guess he was a little lonely. He had retired, and uh, people didn't come visit him often enough. So he ended up meeting some woman on the street who was homeless and invited her to live in his house, th th thinking he was doing her a favor or something. So she stayed. Little did he know she was a heroin addict, so she took him for all he was worth and stuff. And, and she had him him buying her, uh, what's that stuff called, the substitute for heroin, uh, methadone. Well, that's what she claimed the money was for. I personally think she was just buying the heroin with it. So he ended up uh, eventually losing so much money to her and these other uh, heroin addicts who moved in that he couldn't pay his rent anymore and stuff, and he got thrown off, and then he was on the street, and then his brother came and saved him and put him in a retirement home or something. And last I heard, his brother went took him out of the retirement home and he's living with his brother or something and his yeah. brother won't allow him to talk to any of his old friends because he thinks all of his old friends were these heroin addicts which isn't true i mean the war gamers were good people but uh it's just the heroin addicts he really needs to well, keep the them away from he lost a lot of his miniature collections of games because uh uh when they uh, threw them out they threw all that in the garbage yeah and that, that's uh, a tragedy and the thing was we I had organized that where we could have pulled all this stuff out. You know, friends of his was going to, uh, we were going to pull all this stuff out, put it in storage for about a year. Now, it'd be for, for in storage for a whole year uh, for free, We, you know, uh, for him. But he wouldn't arrange a time for us to come. So mm -hmm. we just, you know, it's like uh, he just didn't want to do that. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it was pride or... Uh, yeah. Or his cemental facilities were falling out. Yeah, I, I think he, he was lost. Yeah. So, um, that's sad. Yeah, he, he may be doing okay, but, you know, we kind of miss him. Yeah, he, he was a cool guy to talk to and stuff. Yeah, before he had all these problems. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, Pete liked to cheat at miniatures. So. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, I learned a thing or two about how to do it and how not to do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. I'm trying to remember, there was some big deal. At, um, uh, some people in the hobby worked with the, with the post office to uh, catch these guys that were selling... Oh, what it is is that they'd be selling miniatures, you send them a check, and nothing ever came back. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And uh, I forget who was working with the postal authorities. Because what they told them was, you know, uh, let them run the ads that he was in his magazine. So, and then, you know, um, we'll check from there, you know, who who's sending in money and and everything. And, you know, the, um, that's how they caught them. But I mean, mm. cheating war gamer. Yeah, there was a guy, this was recent, this was uh, about three years ago, uh, who was going around selling uh, painted airplanes. They're like real small ones for war gaming. And he would go to the conventions and he only had a small amount and then people would say, oh, do you have this kind? He'd be like, yeah, I don't have it with though, but you, 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 pre -order, you can order it and I'll ship it to you for free. So people were buying it from him and he wasn't shipping the merchandise. And then he was going around uh, selling like huge lots of this stuff to like uh, 
game dealers uh, sight unseen say, uh, at, at like an extremely low price and never selling the merchandise and stuff. So yeah, th this guy um, basically, how would I put it? There's a lot of people who are mad at him. <laughs> and uh, I I'm just surprised he's not in jail. Yeah, maybe he has been. Maybe he is right now. <laughs> yeah, he, he's from Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. You more you know more dishonest ones than I have. <laughs> well, that's because I knew the uh, uh, historical... Well, I don't know. It wasn't the historical mention. I don't know. I just... Uh, Met some pretty bad ones, I guess, the, over the years. Yeah, because I'm thinking uh, most of the people I've war gamed with, uh, I have good things to say. Yeah, yeah same with me. 99% of them are good, but the 1% that are bad are, are so bad, uh, you'll never forget them. Oh, there was another guy. This, this guy wasn't a thief or anything. He, he was just a very abrasive personality. He would come to, like, let's say people were having a, a, a war game at someone's house. He would show up and... Uh, stay for one hour and then during this one hour he would make like some nasty remark to just about everyone at the game and then leave and I, it, you know just very abrasive person i couldn't stand the guy he's dead now but uh i thought to myself i was like he always comes here he's always has a a nasty remark uh, geared toward each person at the table i was like i wonder if all week long he thinks of a nasty thing to say and then comes over and then when he's done saying the, the nasty things he's been planning all week he just leaves uh, <laughs> we used to go to this guy frank's house and he would show up there a lot because uh he had frank painting for him and stuff so he'd go there either to drop off figures or or pick them up and for the one hour he'd be there I, it, it was like uh having to deal with a saber-toothed tiger in, in close quarters uh, I remember was a, actually one of the nice guys was John. Uh, I'm trying to remember how we met, but we had a uh, mutual interest. He liked air combat games at the time. We couldn't find uh, only anybody who played air combat games. So and also uh, the games were good for um, if you want to play during the week because he was married. He had you know. A social life and everything and so you know during the week instead of uh, Wednesday night bowling or Wednesday night uh, poker you play uh, air war or mig killers or dauntless or you know things like that he also had an interest in Napoleonics too which is a strange combination yeah I also remember his cousin would join in at times and uh, his cousin's really into airplanes he's got a he had a collection of radio controlled ones and uh, I you know, and we had some, you know, these in-depth discussions about aircraft, World War II, and Mark also joined until uh, uh, with us. He was another one that was uh, very knowledgeable about aircraft. But the problem is everybody started moving away. So, hmm. all right, I don't have any others on my list. I can think of you got any others? Uh, not that. Nothing that stands out particularly. Oh, wait a minute, we forgot about Rob. <laughs> yeah, Rob, Rob, uh, yeah. Rob was a nice guy, but he was very, how should we say, stingy. Um, th this guy, he would, like, order a pizza and not uh, give a tip and stuff, and uh, he go to a restaurant and not leave a tip. It was just ridiculous. Well, all he's got me was that uh, he was a union representative, and he used to yell at waiters and bus drivers, and I told him... Clarence Darrow and a few other union leaders accepted the fact that, you know, occasionally, you know, you get the waiters who are a little slow just to get mm. back at you. you. You got just, they just, you know, they're trying to uh, goad you on so that uh, if they're fired, they can claim that Mr. Union Leader fired them, mm. but a hypocrite. But he never quite understood why that was a problem when I explained it to him. Yeah, I could imagine the... I mean, he would order a pizza all the time for what he was saying. I could hate... I would hate to have been the pizza delivery driver having to deliver that there and get no tips. So you're basically uh, delivering it to him for free and stuff, so... Uh, he was... Uh, he, he liked... He rarely played board games. He uh, did a lot of uh, ancient miniatures. Yeah, originally. that in D&D, uh, &D, uh, Original yeah. Edition. Uh, oh. First time I played Original Edition, D&D uh, &D was with him. He had the uh, wood grain box and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a uh, rule book that was falling apart. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I saw that 
I, I've seen that he had that same box set for years. The first time I saw it was uh, maybe 30 years ago. Last time I saw it was about 10 years ago. So yeah, it looked like it was in pretty bad shape. All the pages were coming out and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I think he made like Xerox copies of it, just and um, you know stapled it together. I, I don't think he 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 would get Xerox copies because you have to pay money for it. Well, maybe yeah. at work he could do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that he would do. That, I used that, to do yeah. that when I worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a long story. We won't yeah. talk about that. Hey, yeah. how guys? That's all we got for this time. We'll have a new topic for next week. Have a good evening. All right.